for other visual effect professionals and studio pipeline managers out there this next update might just be the most important one yet blender 4.4 has achieved the full compliance with the CY2025 VFX reference platform specification. In my previous video, I took time to explain what CY2025 VFX reference platform specification is, but let me do a briefing on this video also. CY2025 VFX reference platform is like a common rulebook for softwares used in visual effect animation and 3d production now why is this important maybe somebody might ask well different studios and artists use lots of different tools we have the likes of blender maya houdini 3ds max nuke etc if each tool used different versions of core libraries like color management or image format it could cause compatibility issues, bugs, or broken files when moving projects between tools or studios. So the VFX reference platform says, hey, for the year 2025, let's all agree to use these specific versions of key software components like OpenColorIO, OpenEXR, OpenVDB, ETC, just so our tools play nice together for blender 4.4 by updating its core libraries to match cy 2025 blender ensures that one your renders color data and simulation files will work together more smoothly with other vfx software two it's ready to be used in professional pipelines where multiple tools are involved three there are fewer bugs or surprises when exporting, importing, or collaborating. Yeah, like I always say in my videos, you really lose nothing by learning Blender. It's completely free, open source, and packed with features that rival even the most biggest names in the industries. Sure, you might decide to invest in a few add-ons or third-party renders like V-Ray down the line, but even then, the core software gives you so much out of the box. And let's be real, when you see the kind of support Blender is getting from major companies like AMD, Nvidia, Adobe, and even Epic Games, it's clear that something big is happening. The industry is paying attention, and so we should be smart as artists to do the same because you don't want to be playing catch up when the shift really takes hold one of the main reasons some mid-sized and high-end studios didn't take blender seriously in the past was because the software didn't always play nice with other tools in their pipeline it lacked the kind of compatibility and standardization that's crucial in professional environment but now blender is actively closing that gap with updates aligning to the vfx reference platform and improvements to some industry core libraries it's becoming more pipeline friendly and that's a big deal for anyone working in professional production now some of you might remember there was a time when blender's future with the vfx reference platform wasn't certain Back in 2022, there was a discussion about potentially moving away from these standards. Well, that's changed over time and today, Blender isn't just meeting these standard specifications, it's fully embracing them. Since version 4.0, we've seen a steady commitment to maintaining this crucial compatibility. I'm sure by now, one might be asking, so how do all these implementations affect their workflow? When we talk about updated libraries like OpenColorIO, OpenEXR, and OpenVDB matching the CY 2025 spec, we are talking about seamless collaboration. 
we are talking about files that transfer smoothly between Blender and other industry standard software. We are also talking about future proofing your projects so they will still open perfectly in years to come. But here is something just as important as the big flashy features. Something you might not see on the splash screen. The Blender team claims to have fixed over 500 bugs in January 2025 alone. Now, that's a huge number. Grease Pencil got the most lab. Recovering features lost in its 4.3 overhaul. Geometry nodes, the user interface and the viewport each saw 70 plus fixes, meaning fewer crashes, smoother workflows, and less time yelling at your screen. Now, I haven't tested all of them myself because, let's be honest, I don't have the time or the millions of views to justify going through 500 bug reports just to put food on my table. Maybe a bigger channel can tackle that. For me, I'm planning to test maybe seven or eight of the common bugs that I personally run into. The thing is, I actually don't encounter that many issues in Blender to begin with. It kind of reminds me of my experience with Adobe Premiere Pro back in the days. People would complain about tons of bugs, but somehow I would only ever run into a few and weirdly, those few were the ones that had no solutions online ever. It was like I discovered the secret boss level bug no one had ever seen. <laughs> Weird times. On that note, if you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the like, subscribe button, and also share so people could also enjoy this info. And if you have any other info you think might be valuable to the viewers, kindly leave them in the comment section below well explained look i'm looking for ways to improve and make each video better than the last and so yeah blender while adding new features have been quietly fixing all those little annoyances that slow you down the stability improvement in 4.4 might not make headlines but they will absolutely make your daily work smoother so what we are seeing in blender 4.4 is a software that's growing up not just in terms of features but in its ability to play nice with professional pipelines it's a statement that blender isn't just for individual artists anymore it's ready for studio productions at the highest level for artists already using blender this is the version that ensures that your work will integrate seamlessly wherever it needs to go. One last thing, I wasn't planning to bring this up since it's a bit off topic, but I realized I forgot to mention it in my previous video, so I'll just leave it here. It has to do with rendering and the overall video quality improvement in Blender, which I think some of you might find useful cycles now plays nicer with older nvidia gpus thanks to optics denoiser updates video sequencer steps up its game with h265 support and proper 10 to 12 bit color handling because let's be honest blurry proxies and washed out colors are so 2020 2020 2019 1990 ish oh and AAC audio support is here too. So no more awkwardly converting your soundtracks just to edit in Blender. Blender 4.4 might not rewrite the rule books, but it does make every chapter easier to read. Whether you are a modeler tired of mesh quirks, an animator battling grease pencil glitches, or a video editor craving modern codecs, this update is your quiet victory. 
okay this is where the video ends and so if you made it this far kindly don't forget to subscribe like share until my next video peace